So now I uh, have the blueprints. They have, uh, they are not done by me, so I I'm not sure they are super precise. But generally speaking, as I said, I'm gonna put these online so that you guys can download them. Generally speaking, um, the way 3D modeling for architecture works, you keep the plan always as a reference. Why? Because the plan can be measured by a survey by hand. That means that, uh, say for instance, that I need to measure this place, okay? This place I'm going to measure on the field, on the ground, I can measure the plan. The height and everything, it's something that I have to deduct from what I'm doing myself, okay? Obviously there are some people that have the tools, but because of the nature of the precision itself, of being on the ground, the plan is always what says the truth. Does that make sense? Think about it. You can measure very good a plan, but an elevation you have to draw by yourself from the things that you gather also from the plan, okay? So some mistakes can happen when drawing the elevation. That means that you should relate all the time to the plan first, double check in the plan if there are any mistakes that could apply to the elevation, okay? With that said, we have the drawing. I've already grouped it into small elements, so the different elevations, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. So say that I have, as I said, just watch, you don't have to follow along. Say that I have three lines, okay? There are three different lines. I can select all the lines and with STRG, so Control G, I can group them. Now these are grouped and I can treat them as one object, okay? Now bear in mind that if I use this technique of selecting control uh, shift, I can select the single elements within the group. And I can delete them, I can modify them, I can turn them. They are completely independent from the group. But if I select the whole group, they will be referenced with one another. That's what I did here. I separated the whole geometry or the whole drawing into the elevations that I needed. So for instance, the uh, east elevation, uh, north elevation, south elevation, and so on and so forth. And I put the plan in the middle. Why? Because the plan is usually what it's used to reference all these elevations for the 3D modeling. How do we do this? I've already done it here. I've By grouping this, I can simply, you know, turn it 90 degrees. Now, to turn in 90 degrees, either I click here once and then type 90, or the um, gizmo or the gumball gives the possibility with shift to snap it to 90 degrees, in to 45 degrees, no, it's 90 degrees incremental, okay? So now the, surf the, the geometry is flat. Now what I need to do, I need to find a reference point to which I can align this geometry. And now this is where it gets fun. Rhino has all the tools that you need to be super precise. I'm gonna click here for the moving tool and I'm going to select the middle of this beam. And the reason why I wanna use the middle of this beam is that if there is an issue in the elevation at least my margin of error won't be biased only to one side, but it will be divided on two sides. Does it make sense? So I'm not taking the measurements from the uh, beginning of the geometry, but from the middle. So if I make a mistake, I don't have three centimeters on one side, but I have one and a half on one side and one and a half on the other, okay? It's generally a good idea to keep that in mind. So I click in the middle, and now you can see I'm moving this I don't know where, okay? Generally speaking, if I'm in perspective view, Rhino uses the X, Y plane to move my geometry. What does that mean? You can see it down here, X, Y, the geometry, it's working in this plane. Now, if I click Shift, I go into Ortho mode. Now, look what happened when I go in Ortho mode and I look for a snap point. 
if I find a snap point, the ortho mode gets overwritten. How do I prevent that? I am still clicking sh uh, shift. I click tab, which is this, bo uh, this button with the two arrows. I click it once. And now that I clicked it, look, my hands are free. Because very often I see the students, they keep all their hands on the keyboard and then they move the mouse with the foot. You don't have to do that. Now your hands are free. Move towards the middle of this beam. You will find it. In this case, it's the perpendicular point. Why is it the perpendicular? Because in my case, it's already aligned. So all I have to do, I click on perpendicular. And I know that now my elevation, it's in line with my uh, plan. For now, that's all I need, because eventually, being the geometry regular all over, all I need to know is the height of the elements. Okay? That's all. Now, let's start modeling. Let's start saying that I want to create this deck. Okay? First of all, <coughs> I need to make sure that uh, my geometry is also in uh, line with the zero point how do we do this well in this case in this case what i need to do i need to fix a zero point on the ground which is a random line and then i go to the move tool and i switch on the vertical now i know that my ground is this one oops i need to select my elevation i know that my ground it's this one I need to align my ground with this line. In this case, it's already done. So now I can start extruding the elements. I go to my uh, plan and I click a box here to here. And I extrude this box to this height. Now, the box is extrude. But I don't know if it's extruded in the bottom at the same position as it is on the uh, ground. So what do I need to do? I take the box, click Scale 1D. This is a tool that allows me to scale the geometry in one direction. And now I can pull the geometry up here. And now the geometry, if I go into my front view, fits exactly the shape of my elevation. Okay, great. Now one thing that I can do, I can make, it, uh, make a copy of this element by clicking on the copy object, starting from this corner and going all the way to this one. As you can see, the geometry, it's not uh, fitting, but it doesn't matter. If I go to the top view, my geometry is selected. I can, again, scale in one direction. Only this time, I set the direction of my scaling outside of my viewport. What do I mean by that? If I try to go down, I don't know which point in space is Rhino using to snap its position. Do you understand? The point that you see down here, perpendicular, could be lower or could be higher. I don't know. So what, uh, what do I do? I go somewhere where my geometry doesn't snap, click on shift, click on tab again. Now my hands are free. I select this point and I use this point as a reference and I snap my, my point down here. So now the geometry fits the width of this deck. I do the same again from the top. By the way, I can repeat a command by right clicking on my mouse once. So instead of going that direction, I go back, fix my direction. Now my direction is fixed. My hands are free. Click the box down here and stretch my geometry all the way down there. Now the geometry is stretched, but it's not in position with the with the um, elevation. What do I do? I go to my move tool, click on vertical. Yes, 
that means that it can only move vertical and I move my geometry from here to here now I got my two elements in position what I should do I should check that the height of my geometry it's the same let's double check it because we don't know scale one direction from here to here and let's make sure that my geometry finishes here in this case it's perfect so I can leave it like this now that this work is done all I have to do I have to make a copy in vertical from this point to that point and as you can see the house start to appear there is really no science to it there is just you know understanding how the 3d tool works and then after that you're done the model it's basically super simple what do we mean by that let's make for for, for instance the phalanges okay all I have to do I go from the top view now in this case I could take the geometry that it's already there but I want to preserve it I don't want to touch it I want to do my own stuff so what do I do I create a profile and then I create another profile I'm using really the most um, the fastest way okay you can be super precise from scratch but it doesn't matter now with a cross selection I get to select only my three profiles makes sense right now I'm gonna move them out of the way I wanna have them down here because I don't wanna be um, you know interfered by any other geometry and with this button up here I can zoom into that okay good the geometry is flat but it's still three pieces of geometry that I have to patch together how do I do this very simple trim with trim I can cut Oops. in this case the geometry doesn't touch that's okay one thing that I can do I can use this geometry control G to group it and I can simply go over it now this might looks like you're doing your work a couple of times but I guarantee you you need to have this kind of construction lines that allow you to be sure that your geometry is precise there you go my geometry is there all I have to do now is to move this back in position the geometry is back in position I can zoom onto it and guess what extrude to the end of my elevation the element is now designed I have it there let's check if it's closed oh I forgot to close it so what I need to do is write cap and now the element is capped and it's a solid geometry now that I have it once I can simply copy it I'm gonna copy it from the middle and look what I'm doing now I'm using the same control uh, tab sorry shift tab sequence that I used before why because I want to make sure that my axe is locked in the right position there we go once again and once again don't worry about it too much we're gonna scale those later now I have these elements I can simply select these elements I have this the elements selected look at this they are there they're modeled you see them all I have to do is mirror these elements from the middle in that direction and now the house is there and eventually what you're gonna realize is that this one it's too big it shouldn't have been that's fine I can simply scale it into one direction I'm gonna find the right snapping point so that I know that this stays straight 
and I'm gonna go all the way down there. Mirror it from the middle, take this, these two elements, actually in this case it's only these ones, and copy them once again from the middle, Control shift in that direction. So I made the model in about three minutes. Okay, it's really super simple. Now what we are going to do, I'm going to stop this because eventually this is everything that you need to understand that I haven't done anything scientific, you know, it's super simple. And we're gonna do the whole modeling from scratch together so that you get to try every single technique that I've implemented right now. Is that clear? Okay, I'll stop the video and then we'll start working together.